In this video, we'll finally be diving into creating nodes from our UI. Previously, we have shown how to create nodes through REST API client, but now we're just going to be creating a form, a user interface, where the user can input their nodes, save it, and then see the list in their home page. Let's start by first creating a create endpoint. So we have a create node endpoint, which will be a post endpoint, and we can pass the payload or the body into that post endpoint, which will have our title and description field. Now, as you can see, this part is repeated. Why not just put this in our config file where we have our server URL? Our server URL is Firebase URL, so I'll just keep it here. And I'll just import this using import API URL from config. And let me just replace this with API endpoint. Actually, this will be config because I'm directly importing the config object. And let me just replace this here with this. Cool. So in the last video, we have talked about how to list our nodes. Now we're going to create another component, which will be responsible for creating our nodes. So in this component, we're going to add a JSX file. And in this file, we're just going to have something like a class based component. Let me just replace these with node form. And let me just empty this. Let's add a container to this. And let's add a header. Now, since we're using Bootstrap Forms, I'm just going to go to the Bootstrap Forms documentation and I'm just going to copy some of these boilerplate code for generating a form. So let me just copy this out, paste it here. Let me replace the form with a div and replace the classes with class name. I'll also replace the input tag with a slash at the end, which is the reason why my editor is showing an error. So I'm going to clean this code up a bit and show you the final version of how this looks after the cleanup. Awesome. So now that we have boilerplate code for the form, let's hook this component up with our navigation system. So let me first import this component from the pages slash note form. And let me add another route for this, which will basically be a create page. So now that we've added our notes, now let's see how this looks like. Now, how do I see my note form? Because I don't have any sort of button to basically go there. I can just directly access it from the create page. So this is how my note form looks like. Now that we know how our form looks like, let's try to capture the data from our form input elements and then save it and cr thus create a note. So for that, we need to make use of our state variables. So let's declare two variables called title and description which will be empty initially. We basically need to track the event changes in our input. So if you know about JavaScript, we know that JavaScript is an event-driven language. So everything that you do, every input, every button is all driven by events. And those events are always tracked using event handlers. So for input, our event built-in event handler is on change. And on change, we're going to capture the event and then call a function called on change where we'll pass down this event. So let's declare the onChange function, which takes an event as an argument. Now event has uh, the value as well. So if we want to access the value of the input, we just basically destruct it from the event.target. So basically event.target has the value inside it. Now you may notice that there are two identical input elements and these two identical input elements has there we can't differentiate from which input element we're getting what value so in order to differentiate between them we're just going to add a name prop to it to identify that input is for this particular element 
similarly we're also going to add one here for the description and uh, this on change handler can be written in short as this because we know what kind of um, we know that by default the whatever we get from the event whatever parameter callback we get from the event will always pass that event parameter to it so I'm just gonna shorten it down to this and then have the same function over here now if I want to track the name as well I'm just gonna destruct it from the event.target.name and I'm just gonna set the state such that the name which will be either title or description will have the value updated and on each set state the whole uh, component will re-render re now let me just console log whatever I'm getting just to verify that I am getting I am getting the proper value and of course since this is a callback function we don't have the context of this inside so we have to bind this function to this all right so now let's give it a test so test note one some random description as you can see everything is being typed whatever i write in the title or in the description field everything is being tracked and the whole component re-renders on each change or event changes and yeah so now that we can access the title and description values in our state variables all we have to do is now hook up a function on button on click which will basically take the values from the state and then pass it to our create service so our create service accepts a payload object which can have the title and the description field so let's just write down our on submit function which I guess we don't need any parameters passed because we can access the title and the description field from our state variables. And let's add some validation so that if there is an empty title or even an empty description, we're not gonna save it. We're just gonna return the function because we don't want to waste the space in our database and add an empty object to it. And now once we have finally had this, I'm just going to call the node service dot create function that we've declared before and pass down this title and description in the payload as an object and after that's done let me just console log that I've successfully got a response from it and again I have to hook this up into an event handler so for button it will be an on click event so on the button click I want to trigger this on submit function and again, since we don't have the context of this, we have to bind this function. So now let's give it a test run. So test two, awesome. Save it and we got a response, voila. So we have successfully added a, a note entry to our database. Now, after I've saved, I wanna go navigate back to my homepage. How do I do that? So the way to do that is pretty simple. All you have to do is access the history API from the props, which is already given by default. So every component always has access to the history API once it's hooked up with the React navigation. And all we have to do is just use this to navigate back to our homepage. And since we don't have any need for the response, I'm just gonna remove this and I'm gonna remove this console as well since it's creating noise. Now, another, now save it. Awesome, so this is at the beginning, at the end of the list, I'm getting my latest note and everything works as it should. In the next video, we'll be looking into how to delete notes.